diesel truck. Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the garage. Hope everybody had a good weekend. So it is officially racing season, I would say. Um, the LL Diesel Super Series had their first race this weekend down at Rudy's, something I wish I could have attended with the race truck. But if you guys follow along with the channel, you know the transmission is currently not in the race truck. Heard from Mr. John Muldoon this morning, not this morning, this afternoon. He sent me a video. They took the transmission completely apart. The clutches look perfect. I mean, you could still read the writing on the clutches. So he said the, the, the whole transmission just looked mint. He's going to throw that back together. It looks like it was another converter issue. Um, so we're still waiting to hear back from those guys, figure out what's going on with the converter, which is kind of what we had already already figured that it was converter issues, but now we know for sure. Clutches were holding, transmission wasn't slipping. So the race truck's kind of at a standstill right now. Um, I'll explain more about that later in the week, but we're really not going to do much to it. Um, early this week we're just gonna let it sit and uh like i said we'll talk about that later in the week so for tonight's plan i want to take this industrial <clears throat> i want to take this industrial engine apart that we got this uh, summer out at the auction um if you look at the valve cover it is actually an 08 industrial engine um how you can tell for sure it's an industrial engine other than the fact that you know the timing cover is completely different well that's one way to tell it has a six bolt crank whereas our trucks have a four bolt crank and also the injection pump and the whole power distribution part of this will say i can't really think of the right terminology offhand is all all completely different than on our truck so this is all our timing stuff um, from what I can gather um, so I just drained it was full of water I did spray it down over the weekend I filled it up with some good penetrating oil so hopefully that'll all come apart but that's kind of where we're gonna start I want to rip this thing all apart and just see what we got see what's going on I have no idea what all this mess is it's obviously we have a uh, flywheel here so we're gonna get started doing that i'm just kind of rambling on and on at this point so we'll get to taking this all off and uh just see how far we get this thing ripped down and see what's going on in there we do know that number one cylinder was burnt up i did know that when i bought it it had um i guess an injector had hung open or something so let's get to ripping this thing down and see what this cummins block looks like Got the back end mostly torn apart. Um, here's the the back of the cam, or I guess in the, this case is the front of the cam. I don't know how you'd. Anyway, um, so here's the cam. I pulled the retainer off. As you can see, it does float, but because of our tappets, and I don't have any like dowel rods, like they you know guys say to put them in there when you're doing uh, cam swap on your truck. Not that we're real worried about it. If I could get it out, I'd just pull it out. I'm not, I don't really care. But now I, I'm not a engine expert or anything like that i've never had one of these apart before but i was under the assumption that on one of the sides and maybe this is just your older trucks not your common rails but there was an access panel to get to your tappets uh tappet cover i get, think they call it i'm not seeing that on this engine um i don't know if i'm just missing it 
And like I said, maybe that's a uh, just like a 24 valve and 12 valve thing. But yeah, I am not seeing any kind of a access plate to get in there. I don't even know why I'm looking over here. It'd be on the other side. But um, yeah, I'm not seeing any kind of a place to get in there and get them things. Uh, but I'm probably going to pull the rest of this miscellaneous bracketry off just to get it out of the way. And then I'll figure out how to do that, whether I flip it over or whatnot. But as you can see, the adapter plate's actually in two pieces. Um, when I pulled the flywheel off and then pulled this one off, you can see that the rear main seal is at actually integral to this big ass heavy adapter plate. It's not on the back of the engine like on our truck. Um, actually, I'll slide under there and show you right now. So this is what we got here on this industrial engine. And here's what the back of our engine looks like with the rear main seal actually in the back of the engine itself and you know and then there's our adapter plate which as you can see is much smaller than that aluminum jobby we just pulled off hmm interesting correction of what i was saying i just looked it up on the phone there is no tappa cover that's a, a 12 valve thing it's not a common rail thing so we're just going to keep plugging away i'm going to pull all this periphery sh perifer peripheral shit off pull the oil cooler the water pump and just kind of keep keep going taking this stuff off this block I went to pull the balancer off and the whole thing actually still spins I was surprised Look at that. Huh. That's pretty shocking. You can really see how uh, melted out, melted up that piston is. Hmm. All right, I figure I'll uh, try and get that balancer off and rest this shit on the front and uh, we'll proceed from there. I was able to pull the cam out once I stood up the the engine here. As you can see, there's our our cam bore. I don't know how much of that you'll be able to see. But if we look in here, let's see. There are our tappets right there. That's what uh rides on the cam and then pushes the push rod. Oh. Yeah. So there's a tap it right there. Like I was saying, this rides on the cam, push rod goes in here, push rod goes up, actuates the rocker. So we'll just leave that right there for now. All right. Um, I couldn't get the balancer off and I don't have a good puller here. So I have to decide where to go from here. So maybe we'll see if we can get a couple of these pistons out and uh, yeah, keep working right along. able to get the dampener off after I had set it on there to, and got that one piston out I guess that was enough to you know kind of loosen it up I guess it was stuck on this 
fit right here. So that's off. I pulled the oil pump out, and as you can see, I got kind of shit everywhere. I'm doing this very unorganized like, but here's the oil pump. So as you can see, that's uh, that's what gives you your oil pressure right there. So I'm going to try and finagle this thing over 180 degrees. See if uh, yeah, see if we can pull it apart. Well, we've been defeated for the evening. Um, it's getting late and this one bolt actually rounded off in the socket and I can't get it. I was gonna start grinding it and I just said, you know what, that's enough for tonight. Um, other than that, all of the rods are disconnected from the crank, all the main bearings are out. Um, so once we get that bolt taken care of, we'll be able to get that bearing cap off pull our crankshaft out, flip it back over, or stand it up, whatever, and get all our pistons and rods out. As you can see, I just got shit all over the place. I was just kinda, I don't know what I was thinking. I was just kinda throwing shit all around. But um, as you can see, we got our oil cooler out. Um, as we went over earlier, our oil pump. Let me even drop them more shit. But uh, yeah. Got it pretty well disassembled. Like I said, just a complete fucking mess. I'm gonna have to clean up tomorrow. It's getting too late to do it tonight. Tonight, um, bearings, there's our thrust bearing. As you can see, it's a, uh, looks like it's a little chewed up in here, but yeah, I don't know, man. But uh, yeah, so we got one piston out. I did it in a very, um, Oafish way, I guess. I just kind of was beating on a pry bar. I just wanted to get one of them out. But that being said, guys, if we do use this engine for anything, it's just going to be the block. We're not going to reuse the crank. Obviously, we get new rods if we ever put it in the race truck and had it built. Plus, we'd have to get all the front timing gear and all that kind of stuff. So, really, all this kind of stuff is just trash. Um, you know, depending on what way we'd go, we'd still need our main caps, but they are numbered. <laughs> one through seven so they're all numbered i don't know if that's a a cummins thing or you could tell somebody had this apart previously because the rods are marked i don't know if you guys can make out that paint mark but uh yeah tomorrow we'll get this thing all finished disassembled and just kind of go over what all we got um what everything is like i said i've never actually taken one of these apart before so it's been a little bit of a learning experience for myself too. And obviously this thing has some stuff on it we are not used to seeing with our pickup trucks. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, we'll get back at it tomorrow, try and get this thing completely apart. And uh, maybe we'll make some cool furniture with these pistons and rods. Like I said, this shit wouldn't be going back in anyway. We're just interested in the block itself. All right guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Get out in your garage, get the wrench on your truck. I'll catch you on the next one.